Welcome to the Firearms Insider Gun and Gear Review Podcast, episode 495. This show is brought to you by Primary Arms, VZ Grips, and Walker Defense. In this show, we have on Sovereign Ammo, a review, and maybe some other stuff. We don't know. And as you may know, we showcase guns, gear, and anything else you might be interested in. We do our best to evaluate products from an unbiased and honest perspective. I'm Chad Wallace, and my co-hosts tonight are Tony, Rob, and we have Amadeo from Sovereign Ammo. Now, Walker, nice. Walker Defense provides shooters with the finest, most innovative quality tactical accessories and firearm components around. From their Nile grip panels to their Nero muzzle brakes, no details are ever left behind. Only top quality materials are used in the manufacturing process. Together, all of this gives you some of the best firearm performance around. Everything they have to offer is proudly made in the USA. Walker Defense, where American ingenuity meets bleeding edge technology. And our product of the week from them is the Nero 556 because they are back in stock. You can visit Walker Defense Research at walkerdr.com. Don't forget to use the code INSIDER15 for 15% off anything you find over there. And now, we're on to what we did in firearms, or whatever. So, Rob, did you work? It's easy. I did. I, I work, 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 work. Well, there's what Rob did. I have a day off in three weeks. I had to do jacket firearms. That's what I figured. Uh Amadeo, did you do anything fun or not work related that's out of the norm? No, not really. Everything's work related. A lot of traveling. I think seven out of the last eight weeks. So Yeah, that I yeah, that does not yeah. sound fun to me. Tony? Well, I put out the second issue for everyone podcast episode ninety seven. Fired up. You should hear it. Sounds awesome. It was one of the greatest works of podcasting ever podcasted by a podcaster. And then, of course, Chad posted the High Point 995 carbine review. That Tony Thank did. You, sir. You know, seven yeah, years that later. I, that I did. I wrote, hey, listen, you have to get a track record, man. <laughs> <laughs> got a good track record on this thing. I got seven years of use out of it. Uh, Who knows it better than me? That's true. Um and then uh, uh, Gideon Optics sent me a, uh, a red dot, their judge. So I'm going to put it on my SR22. Um, but I never had a red dot before. So I wanted to see what my baseline was with my SR22. And I wanted to come up with a test for it. So I did the uh, police qualification. I shot the police qualification yesterday with iron sights. And it goes up 25 yards. So I did that. And now when I install this thing, I'm going to shoot it again and see how I do. And I'm also going to compete with it. So because I have my times from where I compete on the police challenge. So I'm just going to see if my accuracy inc increases. So that's the plan. And I'll be checking in with you guys as time goes by, as I improve or whether I say this thing's a fad and I throw it away. <laughs> Right? Yeah, it's a fad. That's what it is. I'm Nobody's the red dots are a fad. <laughs> that's what the hey, Tony. That's what they said back in the day when people started putting them on ARs. Yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. listen, it's a fad. We don't know if it's going to work out. That's right. That's I right. Mean, it might. It might just go away. Go the way of that rap music. Nobody <laughs> listens to that. <laughs> Nobody listens to that. Yeah, I. I didn't really do anything. I was working on a review or two of these uh, Z Bolt Blazer LED and LEP lights. Um, I think that's about the extent of what I did. I'm still kind of limited. I think next weekend I'm going to try to get to the range, contrary to what you know the doctor says I might should probably do. Sure. But I can shoot left handed. Your arms out of the sling. Uh, yeah. Your arms out of the yep, sling. Yeah. Yeah. See. <laughs> what so, happened to your arm? I. Well, the best explanation is it was a lab oh. accident. A lab accident? <laughs> yeah, the dog type. The dog oh, tore my man. rotator cuff and shrayed, oh. frayed my uh, bicep tendons, and so I had to have surgery on it. So, <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> so basically the surgery wasn't bad. It's the recovery that's now, but I'm not supposed to lift anything more than five pounds. And it's like, Hey, I got to go shooting. It's just one of those things, but you know, Hey, it's left-handed. I can do it. So, you know, I'll, I'll be limited, but it's always good practice for me. I was just going to say that's good practice for your other hand. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And even, even with a rifle, it's good practice too. just, you know, shooting offhand. So I can't go wrong there. Now bandwidth sponsor, if you've listened is our friends over at Patriot patch Co. And of course they always have their patch of the month club. You need to go look at it, check it out, join it. You get a free cool patch every month. Well, I don't, it's not free. I mean, it costs you and a sticker and various other things sometimes. Now we do have our 500th episode giveaway. Uh, you can go to firearmsinsider.tv slash giveaway to enter right now. Uh, we have the primary arms classic RD 25 red dot we're giving away. And that will be on the 500th episode. We're trying, I'm trying to round up a few more things for other people, but you know, I think, I, I think we'll get there. I just, I'm like, yeah, it'll be kind of cool. Just have a different style show that time that day. Rob, you up for your disclaimer? The views and opinions expressed in this podcast are those of the individual co-hosts and do not reflect the official policy or position of the Firearms Radio Network and or their employers. This is not legal advice, nor should it be considered as such. Your discretion is advised. This is especially true on live shows. You want me to go hit the primary arms? M- might as well. Okay, so our main topic tonight is going to be sponsored by Primary Arms. Primary Arms seeks to provide the best shopping experience for everything firearms. With over 13,000 products from your favorite brands, Primary Arms carries a complete selection of rifles, handguns, firearm parts, and shooting gear. Every order comes with a commitment to superior service, fast shipping, and an expert support team. And, oh God, Chad, our Primary Arms product of the week is the EOTech XPS 2.0. <laughs> Chad, really? Hey, really? hey, I'm doing a new thing every every month. Like piece of crap. Every month, Primary Arms has a spotlight of a brand, and their brand spotlight this month is EOTech. So I'm picking products from EOTech to put as the product of the week. And I always wonder why we have a tough time getting sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> I love the fact that he goes to Wisconsin and learn how to read. Email this whole thing. I know. <laughs> and remember to sign up for Primary Arms newsletter and more at frn.deals slash PA. And use the code Firearms Radio at Primary Arms and check firearmsradio.net slash PA for the latest deal. Nice. Nicely hey, done. Tell us about this for. Thank you. You tell us about this Viridian RF X45. I am. I'm going to give you the quick run, the quick review rundown of it. So, okay, you're on the clock, dude. I'm on the clock. <laughs> so, this is the Viridian RF X45 on, as we like to say, this you know, CO2 air powered pistol. Uh huh. <laughs> it's an enclosed emitter, red dot sight market as we know, is getting packed with options. One of those options is the Viridian RFX 45. Now, because it's Viridian, it uses a green dot, not red, as green is what the Viridian line is known for. The RFX 45 is mainly designed for pistols, but you can use it on rifles. Uh, I'm basically going to focus on the pistol option of it. Now, this is a closed emitter style dot. Some people have nicknamed them mailbox sights since they do look like a mailbox sitting on top of your pistol due to the square boxy shape of the sight. The closed emitter sight has some distinct advantages over the open emitter style. For instance, the emitter won't get dust or moisture on it, so the image of the dot stays clear. Yes, dust and moisture can get on the outside of the lenses, but it doesn't affect the emitter itself and is easily wiped off so you can get a decent picture. Now, I find in closed style red dots are easier for me to find the dot. This is due because I'm looking down a tube or square. And as always, your eye tends to line up at the center of the tube naturally. Since this is a rectangle, it works the same way for me. Now, 
there are a few disadvantages, small ones. Enclo enclosed sites like the RFX 45 can weigh a little more than open emitter sites. Now, the RFX 45 only weighs about three quarters of an ounce more than your standard open reflex sites. So it's still light enough that you probably won't have to change a recoil spring. I didn't. I didn't even change anything. I just mounted it up and it was good to go. Now, the next disadvantage is could be the size. Mainly not because of what it looks like, but because it's slightly larger. You could hit it on something uh, and it could be harder to conceal under like a t-shirt or something than that. Otherwise, the RFX 45 is a great sight option. Most closed emitter sites you encounter have an acro footprint. The Viridian RFX 45 is no different. Acro style footprint is a little unique in that it's kind of like a mini pick rail. It means you will need an adapter if your slide is not specifically cut for an acro cut. Don't fear, Viridian has different options as to what a adapter plate the RFX 45 comes with. Either MOS, RMR, Doctor, or a low or high mount, depending on if you're mounting on a shotgun or AR. Now, the one they sent me had an MOS adapter. And, of course, because the RMR adapter one wasn't out yet. So I went to Primary Machine and got a plate that adapted an RMR to the Acro. Works just fine. And I am happy to say that the Viridian uses it, as I call, an industry standard mounting platform for the RFX 45, which, as you can tell, most mailbox style sites will use that Acro footprint. Now, the RFX 45 is packed with features, of course, it does have your instant on. So whenever it senses motion, turns the green dot on, turns it off after two minutes of sitting where there's no motion. Feature worked flawlessly for me, had zero problems with it. Now, next up, 50,000 hour battery life. You know, long battery life attributed to its instant on capability does run a CR2032 battery, so they're easily found. Now, the green dot size is listed at 5 MOA, so it is slightly larger than some others. But since it's green, the 5 MOA actually appears a little smaller to me. But either way, 5 MOA dot worked fine for everything I did with it. it does have 10 brightness settings, two, night, 2 or night vision compatible. At the highest setting, you can see the green dot in direct sunlight. Uh, during my shooting experiences, some in bright sunlight. I didn't have any problem seeing the dot, showed up just fine. Now, of course, but two of those times during matches, some guy from the off-road podcast beat me, but that's that's irrelevant. <laughs> uh, window size can play an important role if you're choosing an enclosed red dot, green dot. The Viridian has a 24 millimeter wide by 15 and a half millimeter tall window size. Window size is wider than most of its competition. Most are 15 by 15. So as mentioned previously, window size makes the site super easy for me to pick up. That includes under recoil and the draw stroke and transitioning between targets. The clear green dot probably helps a little with that too. But all I can say is I do pick up the RFX 45's dot faster than my open reflex sights not in the review is I'm seriously thinking about moving it off of this carry gun onto something else like Glock 17 size, but that's, that's irrelevant. Now, because this is a mailbox site, I'll explain a little about its style. Yes, it's square, but more to the point, the battery is housed at the top of the optic. So no removing the site to change battery on the left side is a rubber pad with up down brightness buttons. The glass has an ever so slight tint to it. I never even noticed it. Even on darker days, it is super clear. Now, the dots are pretty clear to me also. Clearer than a lot of dots I have. And I do have an astigmatism, so the dot stars out like a lot of people do. Doesn't seem to do it as much as some of my other green dots. Might be because the way the lenses are mounted or something. I don't know. I did mount this to a great gross precision slide that's cut for an RMR. Now the RFX 45 sits level with the top of the slide. 
with the adapter plate. It would with their adapter plate also. doesn't really matter. Uh, it does allow me to use the tall iron sights that are on it. You can still see them through the sight. If you had standard sights, height sights, you would not be able to. So if you're in the market for a mailbox style sight, I would take a look at the Viridian RFX 45. It may cost a little bit more than some of the others, but you are getting a quality enclosed green dot sight. I did use it quite a bit. It did never fail me. Uh, some, something I cannot say about the ammo I was using. So I should have probably used who's on here and I wouldn't have had that problem. <laughs> uh, you get a lot of high-end features with RFX 45. So check them out at viridianweapontech.com. Now the insider review, eight key points. Claim to fame, of course, it's an enclosed green dot preflex site. Target market is pretty much anybody who wants one of these things. Features and benefits, we did go through a bunch. The acro footprint, dimensions, it is 1.9 inches by 1.1 by 1.13. Lens di dimensions, we went over that, 24 by 15 and a half. It has 90 MOA of adjustments. Let's see, what am I missing here? Weight is 1.73 ounces. It's made from 6061 aluminum, and it is hard coat anodized. It's IPXC rated. Also has an operating temperature of minus 4 to 130. Does have a limited lifetime warranty. So you go down here, there is a link to another review. Price point. Looks like MSRP is $459 on these things. And retails about $400. Uh, you can get them at Viridian or Gun Mag Warehouse has, seems to have them. They do run sales quite often on these, so you can get them less expensive. For our rating, the Pros does have a crisp, clean dot. It's enclosed, so dirt and water don't get in the emitter. It is a decent-sized window. has actual click adjustments. Uh, the battery life's great, and the instant-on motion activa activation. The cons, of course, is the price, and you do need an adapter plate for most applications. But... On all of that, I did give it a score of 8, which was great. Now, you guys got any questions on it? No? Tony, I can't hear you. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, the mute, the, the mute icon decided to play hide and go seek with me. All right. <clears throat> this thing is green, right? Yes. All right, does it show up better than the red? Because I know we both have stigmatism. We both have stigmata. Yes, uh, it seems to, all of the green dots that I have seem to be a little clearer than my red dots. Now, granted, they still bloom out some. This one mm -hmm. just happens to be the clearest. Like, I literally, I have three green dots. I literally set them all side by side <laughs> and looked at them. They do, this one was a little clearer to me. That doesn't mean... Your astigmatism is going to make it better. Yeah, well, my stigma, everything about me is better than you, so my well. astigmatism should be better than you. Um, yeah, no, because I was looking at it, and what was the price? Because you said that was one of the cons. Like, the, the MSRP is like 460 and... <laughs> they yeah, like it. They yeah. want to keep it. And retail is about 400 bucks. Uh, I did see them for like 330 on sale, but that's not but the sale went off so yeah so pretty much our hope is that gideon optic decided to get a fully oh they have one isn't it, it called a it's got a fully enclosed yeah it's got a smaller window it's one of the standard smaller windows <clears throat> i don't mm, okay but yeah, yeah I, I, mean, I, I was looking at that yeah but yeah that's that's the one advantage to this is it has a fairly good window size i mean you can't really tell but so, yeah. Those are suppressor height sights? Uh, these are their Angry Bear arm sights. And so they're they're tall. They're not the super, super tall ones, like the okay. MOS suppressor height ones. But they're still a little bit taller than normal. So you would definitely still have to get a special holster. You had to get an optics-ready holster for it, probably. I just stuck it in the normal holster I usually do. Okay. <laughs> uh, cool. I mean, a lot of them nowadays, I didn't bring the holster with me, are cut out to fit 
optics anyway, since mm-hmm. they since they only go to about there. So that's what I've that's what I found. Any it fits the same holsters that I have for everything the other pistols right. like this. So cool. Yep. So yeah, that was my only question. Okay. Well, I guess we can get into the product spotlight, and that is Amadeo with Sovereign Ammo. And so we get to ask him a bunch of questions and he gets to answer them. (laughs) So we're going to ask him the easy questions first, which is, how did you get into guns? How did I get into guns? (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Uh, Well, I grew up in a liberal state, so I got into guns in the U.S. Army after high school. Um, That was my first experience with m16 and uh 50 caliber gotcha on the 308 so i got to shoot some fun stuff (laughs) do you do you still shoot normal everyday stuff I do not as much as i'd like to um i was shooting a lot more when i got started in the business um so i started as a reloader so I, you know, I started shooting for myself first. So I was shooting a lot more. Right. Um, but then I got into other calibers with friends. <laughs> <laughs> it's always nice to have friends. Yeah, so, exactly. So, so I have to ask which state you grew up in. Massachusetts. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah. Unfortunately, I'm I'm actually originally from Italy. I came to the U.S. in 1984. Nice, nice. I migrated to uh, Massachusetts. And then after that, I went in the military. I went back to Massachusetts. I lived in New York City. Um, Then I moved out to Denver, Colorado. I was out there for about six years. Uh, Went back to Massachusetts, met my wife, then moved to Hawaii. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) You just couldn't get it. It just keeps going from anti-gun Mecca to anti-gun Mecca. I know. (laughs) I know, but at the end, like that's that's the epiphany of it all, man. I guess with dealing with all the bullshit is what caused me to make my own ammo. And and you guys that's are kind of in Florida too now, so you're you're in a pretty much free state as far as gun laws well, go. Yes. Yeah, kind of free. Kind of free. No. Uh-huh. It depends <clears throat> on the counties too. We actually uh, had a little bit of a challenge getting our FFL when we got started in Duval County where we live. Oh God, yeah, you're. Yeah. And uh, it wasn't the ATF. It wasn't the police chief or the fire marshal. It was actually our zoning department. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, it does get political here in Florida too. Yeah, it does. But think- once you get out of the big cities, you'll find that it's a lot more lax. Uh, well, that's exactly it. We looked in Duval County. They um, they wanted us in like heavy industrial area. It just seemed like there was a lot of people that really didn't know what they were doing. They were under the impression I had explosives and, you know, all the, <laughs> you know, um, but, you know, black powder is actually considered an explode, but I don't do black powder. And, um, you know, they. What do you think gunpowder is? Yeah, well, but it's. it's black- Black powder behaves differently in a fire than than this stuff here that I have behind me. Right. You know, uh, right. smokeless powder. Right. Uh, but but it's weird. The dynamics are actually reversed when it's inside the can uh, inside the casing. Um, so black powder is explosives outside of the case. But once you actually load that, for example, in a forty five Colt, it'll actually burn from top to bottom. So it behaves, and then smokeless powder will will behave the opposite it'll burn if you were just to put a little bit on the ground and just light it on fire it'll burn but it actually explodes inside the casing yeah interesting so sorry man i'm going down a tech no 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 no, we we go down rabbit holes on stuff all the time (laughs) so it's and because we just we're like hey this is kind of your show tonight you get to tell us all about whatever you want uh awesome. which which makes it nice so going down rabbit holes with you know black powder and standard smokeless powder is fine with us uh and and, and it is interesting how how that works and yeah because in a fire normal smokeless powder if it's not contained it just burns a little faster <laughs> you know yeah. it's just so that that's interesting now I think even um, 
I, do you remember that show, Myth Mythbusters? Yep. Oh he, he, no, hate it. He, he Especially did a, the they blew up that cement truck. That was horrible. Yeah, I hated some of it, but some of the episodes were really cool. They did a really cool one on, um, you know, they brought the fire department in and everything to do it, but they actually uh, loaded some safes up with full of ammunition and lit them on fire to like see what happened everybody's under the impression like there's gonna be bullets flying everywhere but it's nothing like that nothing actually happens because mm -hmm. there's only one way that bullet can achieve velocity and that's a barrel and you're not gonna mm -hmm. get that out of a safe so. that's right it well, just you, blows so the brass out and nothing said, yeah 22 shell in a uh in the um the the, the in the what do you call it these are 22 shell in the um in the trucks um Oh damn it! <laughs> Rob's lost so like his mind. They used it as like a circuit breaker in a in a truck. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They used it as a fuse. And got suit and they, they, they opened the circuit. It got hot. It just popped like a little firecracker. Popped. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That that was interesting. Velocity. So, what what <clears throat> got you guys into starting an ammo company? That's uh, that's a great question. That's actually where I would like to start in the beginning. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So it's a very unique story. Uh, like I mentioned, I'm from Italy. I have food and wine in my DNA. So that's actually my background is hospitality. Um, I started off when I was 11 years old as a dishwasher, you know, worked as a busboy, then became a bartender, then a waiter. Then I went to culinary school. I wanted to be a chef and then realized I was gravitating more towards like the front of the house. I wanted to work in a suit. Um, I became a wine sommelier. I worked in like really high profile places in New York City, like White Glove, Service, Garadon Service. Um, really sharpened my skills. Uh, there was a lot of really cool perks to doing that, like, you know, traveling, going to wineries and, you know, comp dinners everywhere I went, which had a cool lifestyle to it and um i guess that's why i never got married i just had too much fun <laughs> and then um i w i was in massachusetts i met my future wife laura who i ended up moving to maui with uh we vacationed there many times and then we're like you know what let's just make it happen and we did we went all in and we sold everything and we moved there. I was working uh, in one of the like fancy resorts there in Kihei. I was a food and beverage director. I was like working like ninety hour weeks. I didn't even get to enjoy any of the any of the amenities I moved there for. Um, and then COVID came and literally shut the whole island down. Everything came to a standstill. Um, then there was lockdowns, like you couldn't like leave the house. Um, and then they slowly started like allowing you to leave, like you could go to the store, but you had to have the mask. And um, it just never kind of went away. It just kind of got worse. And they had like, they started setting up like snitch lines, like, hey, call, call this line if you, your neighbors having people over. They were given $5,000 fines at the beach without a mask at the beach. Mm -hmm. So I was like going crazy, but um, the weirdness started when there was no food coming in. So when the ships don't come in, the shelves don't get stocked. Right, because it's Hawaii. And, uh, yeah. and it was causing a little bit of pandemonium. I mean, you're in, you're in, in the middle of the Pacific on an island, like, you know, it, get, it, get, it can get intimidating. Um, I didn't have any firearms, as you know. They have this by far the strictest gun laws in America. You can't, you actually can't own a pistol in Hawaii. No carry and conceal. Even if you're in law enforcement, it's still hard to maintain it. You have to like reapply every year. They make you jump through a bunch of hoops. Um, so when when all these shelves started going empty, there was like pilfering and, you know, like the hotels are getting broken into because people were hungry and right. they, you know, so I'm like, well, you know, we have three grow seasons. The weather's beautiful. We have access to here. There's hogs on the island. Like you can easily survive off the land here. I just needed a rifle. Right. So I went to get uh, like a 357 lever action, you know, just to go hunt a hog, nothing big. And it was a four-month process. So I wasn't even able to get it. And then 
the woman at the gun store. I won't say any names or where. I don't. I don't want to get anybody in trouble. But you know, because I was like, "What the fuck, man!" Like I'm a veteran. Like I, this is ridiculous. Like I should be able to just buy a little pistol cartridge lever action rifle. Um, so what she did, she was able to help me uh, get a hunter's ed course out of the state of Nebraska. Nice. And uh, yeah, because the state of Nebraska does like a really long methodical test. It takes like all day long to do it, but it's considered uh, credentials because you have to have like your range time or whatever to get. And again, this is a long barrel. This isn't even a concealed carry. I think they called it the FID card. So the way it works is you buy your rifle, you go to the police station, you show the receipt. Tony, Tony, and, Tony's over there laughing. I got it because Tony, in dude, New dude, Jersey is like the same way. But go yeah, on. Yeah, you but, gotta take the receipt. Then, you, then once they approve it, you go back to the gun store. You show the you show the approval from the police department. Then you gotta take the rifle and take it to the police department. I mean, it's. So anyway, that happened. I got, I finally got my rifle four months later, and then guess what? No, no ammo. No ammo. No ammo. I couldn't get thirty-eight or three fifty-seven. So I started learning how to make my own. And probably in Hawaii, you have to have a special card to buy ammo, right? I don't. I think now you do. I know California just passed that. Like they're they're actually running background checks uh, every right. time you buy ammo. And New York oh, just dude, passed it. Just like buying a firearm. Yeah. Yeah. They're doing it in New York and don't have the system set up for it, so <laughs> people can't get approved. Right. I was right. talking to a friend of mine that, 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 that his the gun shop in New York literally told him just go across the street to New Hampshire, buy your ammo there, and come back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's that's what I've had to do with you know some customers that live in those northern states. I'm like, hey, yeah, do you know anybody in New Hampshire? That, that's going to be the easiest, you know. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that's uh that's where I started, like you know, just digesting, reloading manuals, and re- really learning about ballistics. Haven't been a sommelier and working with like beverage programs. I'm really good with numbers, so I I think that was how I was able to have a passion. For ballistic data because it's very boring shit it's very <laughs> tedious a lot of like testing and data um but i love it man and and then once i started like but, actually doing it i fell in love with it yeah well that's the thing when you get in, into people who are truly into reloading they love all that crap the need. yeah i think I the had, book- I had a boss once he, he loved to reload and he would be like okay i've, I've loaded this this round for my my 243 winchester i wrote i loaded this one to 153 grains. This is 154 grains. This is 155 grains. I'm going to take him out to the range to see which performs better. And yep. then I'm going to try them on different analogs to see which would better better be used to do deer hunting. And I'm like, that's right. I'm like, okay, I'll just go down to Bass Pro Shop, find me a, a 308 round, and then go kill a deer with it. Well, that, that's the hook. I, I think that's what got me hooked into it is uh, when I when I started doing reloads, I would go down the range and collect 9 millimeter brass and you know, inspect the casings and make sure they're okay. And then I reloaded them and I would do what this guy did, build build my ladder system, increments of two tenths of a grain and go out there with the chronograph, see what gives the best accuracy and groupings. That's the key for me is the groupings. Um, and that's what gave me the hook. And dude, like the guy with the 243 and the 270 win, guess what, man? His far his stuff is far superior than what a factory can do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not, not only that, but I mean, he would literally paint like stripes on the the casing, so he would know exactly how much yeah. grains were in each case round. I'm like, yeah, cool. Yeah, God bless yeah. you, Walt. Yeah, I, I I I am a reloader because it's cheap. That's the yeah. only reason I reload ammo. I, I do reload for precision. Right, you can make more ammo, you can shoot more. Yes. I And yeah. precision rifle, I've done ladder tests. I've done all this. And I'm like, I like data, but I'd rather just go shoot something. <laughs> so I, I nowadays I get I get a load that's acceptable to me. And I'm like, I'm not, I'm done. <laughs> if you go out and buy the full reloading kit, reloading dies and all that stuff, how much... How much ammo do you really have to go through in order to recoup your costs on all the, the upfront 
Depends what you're shooting. If you're shooting yeah. 300 win mag, then you might want to start reloading. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you're shooting nine millimeter, it probably doesn't yeah. make sense. Exactly. Yes. Well, that, that. So then, after Hawaii, did you guys move to Florida? Yeah, we actually uh, bought a house with FaceTime in our realtor. That's how bad we wanted to get out of there. Okay. I mean, it was just weird. It just felt awkward just to even leave the property. And, and I mean, it shouldn't have been like that. Our rent was $4,000 a month. So, so Lord. like, well, why it's the Hawaii. hell am I here if I can't enjoy my amenities? Ooh, yeah, that's true. Um, and we got really lucky because I'm like, I was in panic mode. I'm like, we got to go. We got to go. Everything's going to get crazy. Inflation. And sure enough. Uh, so we got here January 2021. And it was just the right time. I think right even another the- month or two, the the whole housing market was insane. Insane. Oh, it, it's nuts down here. It's nuts. Yeah. You know, we had like every house had like 20, 30,000, you know, 20 or 30 offers. And then you had like people from Connecticut who were like wanting to pay like 100,000 extra in cash. Uh-huh. So like. Oh, yeah. No, no, Good yeah. luck trying to be a first-time buyer. <laughs> right, you know? no kidding. No, you because if you had a loan, you were competing with somebody who goes, hey, I just sold my house in Jersey, and I have cash. Yeah. Yep. And yep. I'm putting, no, there will be no inspection, no no pre, no pre pre-qualifications. Here's cash. Give me the house. That's what we did. We had to yeah. absorb all those costs to get this house. Yeah. You're absolutely yeah. right. Yeah, that- yeah. I moved back to Florida in 2016. It was okay, but, man, when I sold my place and I moved to where I'm at now, it was like a year before the insanity happened. That's so I'm really glad about where I'm at right now, where I am. Yeah, but it's just nuts. So okay, so now you're in Florida. You like reloading? Yeah, that's how I got started. And um, did and you I let- had a friend who wanted two thousand rounds of forty five ACP? He said, "Can you make them?" I said, "Yes, I can." <laughs> there you, and that's that's what started your journey into making ammo, huh? Yes. Yes. And then I got, then I was like all over the place. I was, uh, cause I wanted to like challenge myself. Like, and I mean, you know, if you're a reloader, you know, like, I, I mean, this is the advice I would give someone if they're going to start loading their ammo is like, start with pistol, graduate to rifle because shit gets a lot more complex. <laughs> There's a lot more, you know, neck tensions. And, um, yeah. so I wanted to challenge myself and then, um, I, you know, I started doing 556, 308, 300 blackout, but then I wanted to get into the big stuff like 338, three, uh, 300, win, uh, 300 Remington Ultra Magnum, big, expensive bullets, um, like 100 grains of gunpowder. And that was at a whole different level because I don't just make those. I would get on the phone with you, I would ask you what you're hunting, how far you're going to be, what the weather is. That because I want to make sure like the powder I choose is not like climate sensitive. Um, the kind of grain, I'll ask your barrel length, the twist rate, and I'll build you the perfect bullet. I, and it was fun, you know, it would take <laughs> yeah. you like five days to, to do 500 rounds. So like freaking Q and his James Bond lab. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. know, that's kind of what it came down to. I, w- I would literally inspect every single primer pocket to make sure everything was symmetrical. You know, if there was a case in that didn't have like a good neck tension, I would just get rid of it. I wouldn't even take a chance with it. You know? And that's how I built my reputation, I guess. Nice. You know? Nice. And then when did you, was it like, I don't know, six, eight months ago when you guys started Sovereign Ammo? Yeah, so I started right here out of this garage. This is where my business started. <laughs> As most um, most businesses do. Exactly. So I, I was operating out of here for about a year. Um, like I said, we were held up with the, the FFL. So that was a problem because we needed a facility in order to get the FFL. Um, so what we did is we expanded our search more countryside. And uh, we got really lucky in Flagler County, which is about 65 miles from where I live. So I have to commute that every day. Um, But they welcomed us with open arms. Police chief was like, hell yeah, we want ammo here. Uh, The zoning department gave us a written letter for the ATF on our first day. We have an awesome landlord and the price is much better. Like we get a lot more for our buck. 
not only that, the areas where they wanted us, like the heavy industrial, was like straight up in the hood. Like not a good place to, to put an ammo company in Jacksonville, man. So well, I guess that, everything happens for a reason. Yeah, that, that, that that's a, that's good though. Now yeah. Now that we got that story, <laughs> uh, which, which is pretty cool. Now, as of right now, all I see is nine millimeter on the website. Yes. Did you used to have two twenty three five five six on there, or was okay, I? We're actually going to be introducing it really fast. So, um, Sovereign Ammo almost came to an end because we were like growing, but we couldn't scale. All I was doing was custom orders. We didn't have like capital for me to buy my components in large quantities like brass if you buy a million you get them at eight cents a piece right if you if you buy a hundred thousand you're they're 16 cents a piece um so we we needed to get funding and uh my wife actually found a a a, a person who had a group of guys that invested in us they believed in our core values and our message and everything and uh, and they gave us money and that allowed us you know to buy fancy machines um and workbenches and everything that we needed upgraded our ammo cans and uh you know uh ironed out some things in operations like getting ourselves set up with U direct ups and all that um but the you know we we proposed a business proposal that focused on nine millimeter um so that was the expectation we set to to the group of investors so um we were trying to reintroduce like 45 556 five, and this and then they were like yeah slow down we want you to get really good at nine millimeter prove that you're good at the concept and you know so it's kind of like a mentorship that they want us to but we're definitely overdue the biggest reason is there's no money to be made on nine millimeter. We're like struggling, you know, the profit margins are low. My competitors crush me, you know, as far as pricing. Um, and a big reason is because I'm obsessed with quality. So I'm not going to put a shitty product out there. Right. And uh, that's why it's tough to get police departments, you know, because they're on a budget. Right, right, right. And, and yeah, I get that. And Yeah, but I mean. And and they go to like Spear or they go to you know the big manufacturers. Oh yeah, we'll give you a big discount, especially if you tell everybody, hey, we use Spear gold dots. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know. Yeah, I think you know even those days might be over for police departments. I think they're actually starting to get the bottom of the barrel shit like Tulamo and anything in the steel casing, because that's all the money that's allocated for them in a year. So if they have and and it's broken down in two tiers: training and duty. They really don't care about the training, and that's where they'll go and buy, like the steel casings or the remanufactured. But when it comes to the duty, yes, it's always going to be, you know, the federal HSTs or the spear gold dots. Those are just standard, you know, for for duty. Right. So, so of course, you guys have plans on doing. Five five six or two twenty three. Yeah, whichever. very soon. Actually, we're looking to unroll that in the next couple months. Nice. Do you? We're already set up for it. And and I'm expecting that you have plans on doing other ammo in the future after that. Uh, yes. You know, I don't know what. But, you know, thirty five ACP for sure. Right <laughs> for sure, and probably yeah because that's what we get the most requests for five five six and forty five. Really, I'm, I, that surprises me that everybody the forty five ACP. I mean, yeah, I get it. There's a million well, guns else? in it. <laughs> I mean, number one's got to be nine millimeter. Yeah, you got two two three five five six. And then, yeah, after that, I mean, the, the, the next biggest mark and caliber is the 45 ACP. And then yeah. 308, 65 I mean, Creedmoor. Yeah, 65 well, is a big one. I think that's the esoteric kind of cartridge right now. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think. Yeah, so. Go ahead, Tony. Where, where, does 40, where does 40 Smith and Wesson come in at? Dead last. 40 Smith and Wesson, <laughs> it is what it is. It's a neutered 10 millimeter, and it will always well, be. It's just funny because, truthfully, the commercial 10 millimeter is neutered 10 millimeter. <laughs> That's true. So let, let, know, let's, stop right? acting, let's stop acting like they sell you something full power. Yeah. You're, paying, you're paying 10 mil prices for 40 cal performance. 
and, yeah. and everybody still strokes their ego. Well, I use real tip. Man, unless it hurts your hand when you pull that trigger, you ain't using real 10 millimeter, dog. <laughs> yes, <exactly. laughs> real 10 millimeter cracked frames, baby. Yeah. Real 10 millimeter cracked frames. Yeah, so that's, that's why I bring it up. Teams. That's why I bring it up, just so I can kick people in the jimmies and go, yeah, your you're 10 ain't 10. Um, my, my, okay, so cool. That's great. Um, that's going to be your next move. My question is, uh, I'm looking at where you ship or where you can't ship, and I see New Jersey on there. Uh, this product yeah. we're unable to ship to Jersey. What's up? <laughs> so I I believe Jersey is one of the ones uh, in the tri-state area that requires uh, our company to register with the state. Um, they also have access to all your credit card information that the bank is allowing them to. So the reason we don't is to protect everybody protect ourselves protect you guys uh, that's that's another big reason why we uh decided to start doing ach because if you pay that way then um then they can't like your your transaction can't be like invest you, know, you don't know that you're buying ammo basically because they're keeping tabs on who's buying ammo in Jersey, if you buy over two thousand rounds, they actually report you to the attorney general's office. Oh God, yeah, I would hate that. Yeah. I can live in Jersey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm laughing. Well, I'm that's not, part I'm, of the registration that I'm talking about is that they keep tabs on the amount you have and the amount you buy. So let's say you mm -hmm. buy two thousand rounds, and then three months later you go and buy another two thousand. There's a red flag. You're probably going to get a visit. Somebody's gonna come. Two thousand rounds. That's a day at the range. Yeah. <laughs> well, the thing yeah, is, two thousand rounds. Two thousand rounds take care of three of my events. So yeah, two thousand rounds will go through in a month and a half. Um, and and that's the funny part. So yeah, I don't even deal with them. Um, <laughs> I just don't deal with them, man, because it's ridiculous. Uh, plus, if they want to see me, trust me, before years up, I'm probably gonna be down there speaking anyway. Yeah. Come on out. Okay. <laughs> Come on out. I'm downstairs. That's I'm right. the speaker. <laughs> um, yeah, that's cool. I just wanted to know because we see a lot of this. People say you don't yeah. ship to Jersey. And then when you ask, usually it's asking uh, online boards and other stuff. Yeah. But what has an answer? I know. So thanks. Here's here's the thing is that like I'll always go the extra mile for people. Being, being a reloader, I know what it's like when you struggle, when you want to go shoot and you don't have ammo and – um, I'm always willing to like, number one, get creative. Like, you know, if you know of a gun store that like you're friends with the owner, you know, he's going to give you a break and not, not like, you know, charge you a bunch of fees to get your ammo delivered there. Hey, that makes it legal. I'm shipping to another FFL. Like everybody's happy. You know, I, I actually tried shipping to Alaska because he wanted our ammo so bad. And, um, so I ended up calling our UPS account manager. She's like, oh, yeah, just put a label on it. And, of course, it gets returned. And, um, you know, come, you know, you know, finding out the logistics of how they do it. But I probably spent the whole day trying to help this guy because I wanted I wanted them to get some ammo. You know, he's he's struggling to get ammo and I feel I feel his pain and I want to help him. So, yeah, we got one of the guys in uh, actually the chat, uh, Roth, Raphael. Who uh, he's like? I'm, I was looking forward to getting one of the civil defense scans too. He lives in Jersey. Yeah, and it's just rough, man. Um, yeah, he comes to our events. Actually, he was a coworker of mine at one time. But he comes to diversity shoots and has a great time. And it's like we have to jump through so many hoops here just yeah. to do what we do. So when people well, ask me I why I'm in the fight. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, to, sorry to interrupt, but I just gave you one. I just gave you a good way to. To get your ammo without, you know, if you if you are friends with some somebody with an FFL, that that might be your best bet, and then just use that as your bypass. Got that right? Yeah. <laughs> there mean, you go. Yeah. Hey man, my whole or thing if you is live this. next to the, the, the Pennsylvania border. That's also a good yeah, because you can ship uh, another, another thing is donations. I know, uh, you know, be, coming from the food and beverage industry, anytime I, I had like special events and everything, the laws up in Massachusetts were very, very strict with alcohol. That's actually why there's no happy hour there, because there's a law in Massachusetts that you can't discount alcohol. 
So you have to get creative. Um, and the way I used to do that is donations. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah so that makes sense. You know, find a loot. Yeah. There's always ways to get around Big Brother, man. Yeah. Has to be. Has American to be. way. Yeah. Has to be. That's it. <laughs> like, That's it. I posted. I posted today. I will not comply. It's the most American thing you can do. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I know. It really is. Yeah. Uh, now. Of course, you can ship to me, but that's a different story. I see that the nine millimeter on the site is 124 grain round nose. Did yes. you guys select 124 because you like it better than 115s or 147s? I do. Yeah. Yes, okay. I do. I do. Yeah. I've got... um, for the for the 124s, um, so this particular batch has um, a medium burning powder. It's called Shooter's World. It's the clean shot. A lot of competition shooters like it because of the softer recoil. Um, but when I do a 124 grain, I always go for 1050. That's that's what I've discovered. Like because the math never lies, right? And then when you're when you're applying when you're out there on the range and you're looking at you know your groupings and um, and you match that up with the feet per second, um, th that 1050 is the cushion for that 124 grain. You're always going to get like the better groupings and most accuracy on that speed. And there's just no reason to load them hot, you know? And I get them all the time. Hey, can you make me NATO rounds? No, <laughs> you know, get yourself. I got plus P I got civil defense. Get You, you know, like it's just uh safety well, comes first. Always. Cause, cause 1000 feet per second. Right. But what what'd you say it was? Ten fifty. Ten fifty for the one twenty four. Yeah, it's, it's subsonic, right? No. Yeah, it's considered subsonic. It's, oh my god! Yeah, it's, it's, it's right. Well, it's right at subsonic. I mean, mm -hmm. others, you know, they use a heavier round, like the one forty. What is 140 it? One forty seven or one fifty? Yeah. Yeah, and those are those are a lot slower, but still, yeah, under under twelve hundred or eleven hundred is sub. Uh, yep. Yeah, Nate, like a NATO round, the 124 is going to be between 12 and 1300 feet per second. They're spicy. Yep. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Q, Q, was it ZQI uh, out of Turkey used to sell yeah. that to Walmart? And I used to buy mm -hmm. a crap ton of that. And you, <laughs> and you can tell the difference. Yeah. That was a that was, mwah, spicy a meatball. Yes, yeah, it's a little uh, snappy. To, to, to speak mm. in, in Italian to make you feel welcome. That's <laughs> like a spicy <laughs> meatball. <laughs> I love it, man. Love and it. Um, so that was, uh, <clears throat> I enjoyed using that, but then they stopped selling it. And But when you go supersonic, you break that barrier and that kind of throws your accuracy off. Yeah. At least that's, that's how it is with like, because I, I started shooting uh, air rifle, competitive air rifle. Yeah. And, and once you get over that, you break it, all of a sudden your groups just start opening up. Yes. So I have discovered that um, I'm not a fan of plus P in general. Like, for example, I wouldn't go for a 124 or a 132 grain plus P. Really, all, all you're doing is you're creating extra pressure, chamber pressure, for an extra 100 feet per second. Just go for that all copper projectile. Like, so I, there's a reason why I have Liberty because I, I've been trying to make that bullet for two fucking years <laughs> and I couldn't, and I couldn't figure out why. Well, now that I talked to the CEO, Gary Ramey, who's one of the most brilliant ballistic minds I ever met, he has the patent on it. So it's all copper. It's 50 grains and for the nine millimeter and it goes 2,100 feet per second. Now you put that on a... 45 right so my 45 acp out of a 1911 same uh civil defense i think it was a 78 grain all copper 2006 feet per second coming out of a 45 so that's that is smoking that yes. is smoking yeah uh, what was the foot pounds energy on something like that though like 550 yeah right around 550 wow that's that's actually really good. yeah yeah the ni the nine millimeter okay. it says the energy is 462 on the website for the civil defense nine millimeter. Yeah, it hits like a and, and it dumps all the energy. And what's beautiful is the bullet just it just fragments. So there's no there's never any over penetration. It's never gonna go through your walls. It's literally the perfect self-defense round. 
And that's, you know, what I have in my 45 in my nightstand. That's so it's not it's not fragmenting ammo. I mean, as in what you shoot at close range on steel, right? Or is it? Yeah, it it would be. Uh, it's not a fragmenting. Like it's not like a soft point. Um, yeah, yeah, frangible. Yeah, it's not frangible. Yeah. Um, there's a. Do you remember that round? The rip, the radical impact. Yep. Projectile? Yeah, yeah. So a radically invasive projectile. It's considered a radical impact projectile because of the chaos it, it causes. Like the wound channel becomes really big. So basically the base of the bullet stops and then it just kind of splits apart into five pieces. Similar to what the the RIP. It just performs a lot better. I think the the flaw with that particular one was it was too ridged and it just like what like it wouldn't go through a jean jacket, basically, you know? But with 2,100 feet per second, you're going to go through anything, man. <laughs> Dan, I'm looking at this accuracy. One inch or 20, is that one inch? At yeah, 25 less, less than one inch. Yeah, less they're than one pretty inch. accurate. Yeah, they shoot really nice. So back. Nah, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying pick a standard, dude. Are we using inches or are we using meters? We're using them both. You're yeah. confusing me. He's Italian. He's using that meters. Italian. <laughs> that Italian, We're going to measure it in spaghetti. <laughs> So, so back to back to your guys' ammo. What kind of accuracy do you usually get? I know it's just practice ammo. It's not defense ammo, but are you getting good, decent accuracy out of most stuff? Yeah, we get. I I mean that's clearly what I go for. Again, I I always bring that chrono to make sure I'm right around that 1050 mark for the 124 grain. Um, and I I go above and beyond too. Like I don't just go out there with five rounds i'll take a can with me and i'll shoot through like five or six different pistols and i'll shoot through an old taurus that i've put ten thousand rounds through nice. i have a you know a six thousand dollar all custom glock with fluted barrel and fancy everything i'll shoot out of a a, a micro smith and wesson i'll shoot out of a longer five inch barrel because what i'm trying to see is I want to make sure it's number one cycling through everything. Um, and you really need to worry about this with, well, there's two things. Well, there's a few things. There's the, the burn rate chart, uh, the burn rate chart, like the powder you're using, the powder charge itself. You want to make sure it's above the minimum, but uh, it's also if you're sh shooting through a suppressed, right? Because that can make a difference with a suppressor. Um, and the other is the submachine gun. Like you want to make sure you're you're able to cycle to across the board. So, um, so far so good. We don't get complaints. And anytime I if I ever do get somebody that something doesn't cycle or whatever, I will go out of my way to investigate it. That's actually fun for me. So, all right, I got a question about, and this is real geek rabbit yeah. hole. All right, um, as a manufacturer, what's the standard deviation you look at? Uh, in your like nine millimeter, what's acceptable to you? Because uh, I've never thought about it until I started. Again, my thing is air rifle, and that's what I got into. And when you see standard e deviation of foot per second, you see a deviation in accuracy sometimes. Exactly. Um, how, how what what do you try to keep it at like minimum, unless it's some kind of trade secret thing? Yeah, that's like, uh, you... that's actually a really really good question. Um, and a lot of that has to do with the exact precise measurement of the powder charge, because that's where you're going to get your deviation from. So like the, this 124 grain, it's at 3.9 grains, right? Um, while I'm on the rabbit hole, what would I do and what we continue to do and will always do is I actually break down the process of manufacturing. So, uh, what we do is we put it through an alpha priming machine first. So it'll inspect the casing. Um, it'll make sure the primer is an exact orientation because the this particular machine has a camera that, that snaps like 5,000 pictures per second. So the tiniest little flaw, it'll get rejected before we start loading it. Right. So you're already minimizing your problems by doing that alone. And then the next is that powder charge. Right. So we 
we load it up to 3.9. We we do a test batch. We take it out in the range again. We're gonna bring a can and fire off several hundred. Uh, we want to make sure the machines are always cleaned and maintained so no powder gets stuck. And then we're as the per so once it's primed, then the the primed brass goes on the loading press. And then from there, it gets loaded with the projectile. We flare it, projectile, bullet seating, and then a crimp. Um, but but that SD is going to come down to that powder charge, especially in pistol, right? Because, because if you have 4.1 grains, that's when you're going to see that foot difference. That, that and, little and guy. Like, it's going to – so if it goes – uh, what is it? If it goes higher, it's it's a little bit too hot, and if it goes lower, it's a little bit too soft. So if you're shooting lower, right automatically, I know that 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 particular round may have had a 3.5 charge. The one that went above, possibly, and then that's when we go back. We take bullets apart, we remeasure, and yeah, it, we we got it dialed into a science, man. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because I, I often wonder that, you know, but I've never asked. Hey, you said you were cool with the rabbit hole. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The other <laughs> Meanwhile, thing, it's other only thing, us listening uh, to it and Rob's falling asleep. Yeah. He's probably passed. Falling asleep. He's passed out. You know, another thing uh, I, I started testing on um, that I will continue to do that I don't know if anybody else does this in the industry is um, shooting in extreme temperatures so like uh this this is really effective in rifle and 556 five, in particular because 308 will eat anything it's not finicky you can put probably 20 30 different powders across various different grains 140 160 doesn't matter 556 five, is very finicky and there's some powders that perform really well some burn dirty right but uh, there was one in particular, I was at the range and it was like 115 degrees. It was summertime, it was humid. Like you could barely like, you know, handle it. Like Thanks. everything was just sweaty and gross. But when I shot this particular uh, batch of 5.56, the feet per second were all over the place. Now I know that the powder charges were all perfect because I did them by hand and I have a digital microscope here to make sure of that. But when I put them on the chronograph, they were off by like two or three hundred feet per second. So that is just a huge red flag and potentially dangerous. So and that's yeah, I mean, right. I, I was gonna I was gonna ask uh, how how do you get extreme temperatures? Do you have like a controlled room? Do you just go in the freezer? And yeah, Florida. <laughs> okay, let's in freaking Florida, dude. Yeah, 100, 100 and, that day was 118 uh, on the heat index with like, you know, 70, 80% humidity. Yeah. So, now, well, I, I want to send my stuff to somebody in Northern Maine so they can take extreme <laughs> cold temperatures. That's, that's, I, that's I, what I, I was... Do that. I want the data, man. That's I what I was data. wondering. Yeah, yeah. Is that, well, how you got cold. When, when, when M16s, when M16s came out or, or went to army trials, yep. um, the Navy SEALs were already using them in Vietnam. So were some of the other special forces advisors. They had no problem with the loads that were in them, 55 grain, one and 12 inch twist. That's right. But excuse me, one and 14 inch twist was what they were using. And then the army took them to a, put them in big army in the big green machine. And they had to check them out and they had to slow that twist rate down to one, oh, speed it up. Sorry, to one and 12. Yes. Uh, to get it to work in cold weather with 55 grain. So it does make a difference. And as somebody that shoots in all weather, I noticed that uh, I was using, what is it, that nylon clad federal? Yeah. For and pistol. Um, I was shooting that and it had to be, it was below freezing. Uh, and, and I was getting a, a, a key holder. I was getting keyhole in at 25 yards because I don't think it was even touching. I think it contracted and so I don't wait, think they were the touching bullet, me. Did the bullet tumble? Oh, the, wow. The bullet was tumbling. I'm like, yo, because it was, uh, interesting. it wasn't the red. It wasn't the red. It was another company. They had blue. I forgot who had blue when, when this, uh, synthetic rounds first came out, but it, I'm like, yo, what's up? Why, why, why am I, 
because I used to shoot like off of bags at 25 for precision. I mean, that's just, yeah. that's how I relax when I shoot. Yeah. And, and, and I noticed that it was, it was below 20 and it would tumble. But when I competed in, uh, with my rifle, with the, uh, dissipator, it looks a lot like this airsoft gun I have right here. Um, <laughs> this is our YouTube airsoft I, gun show. This is my YouTube <laughs> airsoft gun. Um, when I was using that in competition, it was eating it right up. Actually, it was tightening my tightening my groups up. Uh, was, was the weather different iron. that day? Weather it was it was below freezing. I mean, okay. significantly below freezing with the rifle, totally different place. But it was still popping out because you're using a rifle, different caliber. It, it's when you get into the caliber thing and, and like the real geekiness of it all, because most people, when we see it. You either competition and you're just hitting in the A zone, you know, A zone, C zone, B zone, and you keep it moving. Yeah. Or people are happy to hit steel. But when you're looking to try to get the tightest groups you can, yes. it's a whole different world. You know, I mean, when because I'm using iron sights at 100 yards on a yeah. B8 target. And Tony's well, old. He can't see anything. I can't see like I used to. And you're shooting what? What are you shooting at 100 yards? Is it an AR shooting a 5.56? Yeah, AR shooting 5.56. I usually use 55 grain. And I'm shooting something the size of an 8 inch paper plate. Uh, but the bullseye is what? What is the bullseye on a B- B8 target? Wow. Six? Six inches? No. It's... It looks like you're trying to, trying to get the dot. <laughs> You try to get the body uh, of an eye yeah, underneath yeah. the dot. That's yeah. what it looks like. Because I use six o'clock hole. Yeah. So yeah, it, it it's precise. That's why I, I just got that one and eight hawk optic because I'm hoping to use it November 11th to have another event, and I'm hopefully be able to shoot using the hawk optic, and it'll be the first time using magnified optics. So it should nice. be fun. Now, yeah. now on on something completely different but not <laughs> you guys also have not too different not too different you have a, accessories so on your site you can buy shirts and and mugs and stuff mm-hmm. like that uh those things selling pretty good for you yeah the one that says i love uh i love god i love god. guns i love america that's our number one selling uh t-shirt <laughs> nice nice yeah I was trying to guess because I made the uh, I made the IG post and I was like, <laughs> what should I put on the T-shirt? You know, because I wanted to put your slag up and I'm like, all right, cool. Coffee, cu- coffee mug. You can see both sides, but the coffee mug to say I love. Yeah, you could see everything. Right, once. right, right. And then when I got to the T-shirts, because it's not like you have models. That thing is, you know, computer generated. Yeah. But the people's the people's heads were on cricket with the I love shirt. <laughs> if you look at it, it just looks weird. So I, so I was able to find the, the couple on there, the, the girl and the guy, and, and that looked decent. So I think I used that one, right? And then I used the uh, uh, 1984 one, which was, I, I really liked that shirt. I thought that was cool. You sold it in adult sizes, I'd probably buy one. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, Tony, you got to, you got to, we don't even our t-shirts don't even fit Tony because he needs like a seven X or six X or six X or up six yeah. X. All right, keep you in mind, <laughs> yeah. man. Yeah. But, yeah, keep keep me in mind the next time you buy a car cover. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was buying tarps. Yeah, but um, yeah, dude, I wanted to make sure I highlighted your stuff. Um, I appreciate your website. I like the fact you got the blog on there. I think that's important. Uh, even even you said it, and that's why I posted it. Because when you get deplatformed, you'll have somewhere people can go to get information. Yeah. Yep. And I think that is very important that you don't let them take that away from you. Yeah. The the other th- the other cool thing about the website is is that people that you didn't mention was you don't charge for shipping on ammo. Yes. Granted, the ammo might cost a little more, you're getting better quality, but you also ship it free. So Yeah, we do. And yeah. it's insured. So yeah, but do you have to be there to sign for the ammo when it comes? No, not unless you want to. Yeah, I actually, I actually had that happen. You you can sign, and uh, this is back in the day. 
when I used to order what it was that seven six two by fifty four R by the case <laughs> by the case oh, for yeah. twenty bucks. <laughs> um, I used to order by the case. I think it was like a hundred and twenty dollars for like eight hundred and eighty rounds, and uh, I paid like the extra five dollars to some company. I get home and it's not there. My neighbor comes to cry. Hello. Hello, the uh, the man came and he left this on my step. I'm like, wait a minute, I paid extra and you just left it on my neighbor's step. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, I paid the extra so I could sign for it only because I wanted to look at the pain, hurt, and, and disappointment in the UPS driver's face every time I ordered that heavy ammo. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's that's the way to do it. That's the way to do it. And you said uh, it was a 76254R? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. For my is, that one, again. Um, is that like the straight wall? It looks like a, like a 3030 Winchester? No. Oh, no, no. That's what you're talking about is uh, for the pistol. 762 oh. by... What what is it? What is the one for the mo the the Nagant pistol? Oh yeah That's yeah. That's the straight wall. Answer. Yeah yeah yeah. See, the Russians had the same caliber uh, diameter for all of their stuff. Yeah. So seven six two by twenty five was Tokarov. They necked that down. Don't talk about something the, hot. Uh, <laughs> okay. Oh, Tokarov. Yeah. Yeah, that sucker was actually armor piercing. Yeah. It was it was hot like uh, thirty miles back in the day. Yeah, very similar. Yep. Nice. And, yeah. Again, we're geeks, dude. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're geeks. It, There's a reason we do this show. That's right. That's right. Love it. Uh, so, where do you, where can they find you? Easiest place to find you. Sovereignammo.com. All one word, right? Yep, website. All yep. one word, baby. Yep. <laughs> that's that's what I yep, figured. My uh, my wife Laura D. Benedetto. She's always on uh, LinkedIn posting stuff. That's where she's active. I'm below the radar. <laughs> I avoid social media. I just got too much to do. So, um, no, I'm you not have a life. Social media, much? Yeah, I get um, no reason to. And uh, as one of the only people to ever get kicked off of LinkedIn, I'm um, sorry, I won't be able to see your wife's page. Um, <laughs> I got ejected from LinkedIn. <laughs> like like uh, I was telling yeah. Tony, he's the only person so, I've ever known that got booted off of LinkedIn. So I'm assuming well, the ammo you sell, it's it all brand new much. brass. Yes, what was Rob. That? Rob? Ammo on your website, that's all new brass. It's not reloads and stuff like oh, that. Oh, yeah, all new brass. Um, I, we actually, our new batch is going to be Troy brass. Very excited. It's beautiful. Our our ammo has never looked better, man. I'm very excited about it. And uh, I can't wait yes. to get I-5.6, too, because that's going to look really cool in the ammo cans. Are you, are you guys going to yeah, just... Bad. It's too bad I can't pick up the ammo at the, your uh, warehouse, because it would be fun to fly up there, pick up ammo, and fly back. Yeah, anytime, bro. Punch, like, bro. We actually you have what? that option um, to, to pick up at the warehouse. Well, on we your do. website, it says no. Uh, okay. Well, uh, anytime you want to do that, we can make that happen. <laughs> yeah, we, anytime. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I can fly up the rack, man. Demo, fly back. Yeah, that's yeah. A, that's the way to do it. Just fly yourself up there. I like oh, your style, man. Fly the drive, but it's so much more fun. <laughs> <laughs> that 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 I'll agree with. That I'll agree with. Uh, I think. Yeah, well, all I'm saying is, when you fly up there, Rob, pick up like three shirts and stitch them together and send it to me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that 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 would be funny. Yeah, that would be funny. Say, fly, pick up those shirts and fly, fly them up to to Jersey. The what? From to me. The ammo. Fly it up that? to Jersey. Oh, ammo. Yeah, the ammo, uh, the ammo, the shirts, everything. <laughs> I mean, listen. If I'm going to check out the ammo for the next testing of the uh, what was it? Was it my next review? Uh, Using the uh, nine millimeter carbine, I wonder what that comes out. Oh, by the way, yeah, that nine millimeter was a civil defense. It's designed for pistol barrels, right? If I use it on a sixteen inch rifle barrel, I, was, I mean carbine barrel, it's not going to pick up that many more feet per second, is it? Uh, I think it'll pick up out of a sixteen inch. Yeah, you're probably going to get at least two hundred feet more per second. Nice. That would be my guess. I'd, I'd say you're probably going to get 200 additional feet per second. Oh. Yeah. That, you okay. Think- so, because more geek stuff, because sometimes, like, you know, pistol ammo burns different and it usually burns at what, four and a half inch, five inch barrel, maybe? Yeah. Around maybe. A nine inch, right? Yeah. yeah. But, around uh, nine inches, most of it's burns. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, you know, the, and that's the thing, too, is like, you know, rifle rounds are more like, quote unquote, aerodynamic. 
But the thing about the civil defense, there's no lead. It's all copper. So it's going to come screaming out of there. And it should be able to pick up more momentum mm. out of a longer barrel. Okay. But I just never, I mean, it was just a question. Yeah. yeah, I would love to see the data on that, actually. Yeah, that, that's. Uh, do you think the high point can handle it, Tony? High point can handle plus P ammo, so I don't know how you're going to be able to No, no, but I mean, I, listen, I've broken it once already. It doesn't really bother me to break it again. It has a lifetime warranty. That's right. <laughs> They'll just send it right back. Right now, I'm famous. I'm famous as the first person to break one. That's right. I could, be, I, I, I could set a record, but the first person to break one twice. <laughs> Wait a minute. You're, you're the first person to break one without trying to shove something in the barrel that would prevent the projectile from leaving. The That's true. No, yeah. understand. When they did that, it still didn't break. That's true. It didn't like so it. Wait, it bolts the under- barrel out. What's up? Let me understand this correctly. Did I hear you say that High Point offers a, a lifetime warranty? Yeah, on anything yeah, I make. Warranty of the firearm. Really? Mm-hmm. When yep. did that start? I was Ye- wow, okay years ago. All the time, bro. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, and it's so it's if you not do and dumb, any owner. A test bed for you. And it's any owner. It doesn't matter if it's original owner or not. No shit, I didn't know that. Yeah. They know. go by the serial number, man. Wow. They okay. go by the serial number. Yep. Wow. Yeah. So, last question on the ammo for me: When you do two, two, three, are you just going to load standard fifty-five grain or sixty-two, or have you decided I'm yet? Do, I'm looking to do fifty-five grain more for the plinking crowd, and then I'm looking into a seventy-seven grain Sierra Match King for okay uh, for the bougie stuff. For yeah. the bougie stuff, yeah. I I so have that a that might change. We'll so, see. So wait. I, so when you buy 500 rounds of ammo, it comes in the in the ammo crate. Do you actually count out each round, or are you just like throwing it in there by weight? Um, we were using a, a digital scale by the ounce, so I could tell if it was one or two bullets off. But we actually use a very expensive quality control machine right now that counts everything, and it just does everything for us. It loads them into little trays, so we know exactly when we have 500. Nice, yep. nice, nice. Well, do you guys have any more questions for Amadeo? No, I think uh, that was most of my uh, my geeky ass questions. <laughs> I think, Love it. I, I, <laughs> I, I think we got through got those through. Uh, I guess we're gonna skip the other stuff that's in the show notes because. Well, yeah, we'll just delay to another show. Yeah, we're, we're, we're good at sliding stuff to other shows. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Somebody asked, do you do 50 Beowulf? I don't think so. Yeah, not, no, yet. not yet. Give it, give them a few years, and they might make something like that. Well, next up, and guess Rusty's not here, so I guess I got to do this. I'll do it. Oh, Tony will do it. Tony. Tony. Hold on. Where are we at? Hold Easy on. Grip. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> me, 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 me. Well, what the hell? You're not saying you're reading. One. He's got to. He, he's got to find it. He's he's a little not there today. No, it, it almost did something horrible and erased all the notes. <laughs> yeah. Uh-oh. You're making you're making jokes. This almost all went away. <clears throat> Let me see. I'm rusty. I'm rusty. I'm rusty. Right. VZ Grips has been manufacturing handgun grips since 2003. With a reputation for quality, consistency, and innovation, top-tier manufacturers choose VZ Grips. So they come in a variety of styles, patterns, colors, and are manufactured from proprietary G10, Mike Carter, carbon fiber, or polymer. Available with varying degrees of texture, VZ Grips are a wide range of grips for all different firearm types. Made in the USA, VZ Grips comes Gives you the grip you can count on. Feature grip of the week, the 1911 VZ Stipple. Let me check it out, see if it has my favorite color. It, $30. I, I think it has your favorite color, but this is the one that you, that's too grippy for you guys with your baby hands. Oh, yeah, this is the thing that was like grabbing barbed wire. No, thank you. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> so I got to know something. Yeah. Do you think that was more like a rusty or more like a tease? I, it, Listen, I don't know what it was. Because one, Rusty's Tennessee, T Zane is Florida, and it's like really hard to like <laughs> for me nope. to negotiate that. Let me explain how this, this 1911 VZ stipple grip is, though. If you really like the barbed wire, 
<laughs> that's what it felt like repping this thing. <laughs> but some people like really aggressive grips. Uh, one of the guys I shoot with on, on Fridays, I'm like, bro, this will remove fingerprints off their hand. No, I don't want this. <laughs> Your biometric safe no longer works if you use this thing. <laughs> All right, so check VZ Grips out at vzgrips.com, coupon code GGR15. Gets you 15% off handgun and rifle grips. But vzgrips.com. And Tony, you might as well just roll straight into your... You, Roll you. straight into the second is for everyone diversity shoot is going to be this Thursday night, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. at Gun for Higher Range in Woodland Park, New Jersey, only six star range in America. We're going to be there. We're going to have some fun. We're going to eat pizza. We're going to talk about uh, Jersey carry laws. We're going to talk about new legislation coming down, maybe even get some history about the racist history of gun control out there again. It's going to be fun. Buy your tickets now. I've limited to 30 people. Uh, the earlier you buy your tickets, at least I'll know the pizza map because it's two slices per person. I just need to know that early. Um, leave early. Traffic is stupid. No, not four. If I'm there, it's not four. four. <laughs> oh, my, my thing, some people show up and they don't want to eat. Some people show up and are vegan. And, and that was one of my best, my best one-liners. If you vegan and you're here because we have cheese pizza, you have pepperoni pizza, and if you're vegan, you should have left before you should have ate before you left the house because we don't play that. <laughs> <laughs> no one's playing with your weird food choices, bro. Um, so yeah, we're gonna have fun. Go to eventbrite.com, pick up your tickets, follow Tony Simon on Eventbrite. You'll get notifications of whenever we post something. Plus, coming up on events, I start sending out emails. I send out like two or three a week the first week, and then I start banging them out every other day. And then the last week I send them to you every morning, just so you don't forget, because people tend to forget when days fly up on you like that. So thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. This is eight straight years of being on this show, talking about this diversity shoot. I appreciate you guys always for having me on and putting up with my stuff. Awesome. Exactly. And Amadeo, thank you for telling us about Sovereign Ammo. Uh, stick around after we shut the show off and you can, you don't have to skip out immediately. You can send Thank us, you. Yeah, you. yes, you can send us questions, comments, or feedback to gun gear review at gmail.com. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review somewhere. Also check out all the great shows on the firearms radio network at firearmsradio.net. You can also visit the Firearms Insider at firearmsinsider.tv for reviews and various other links to stuff. Don't forget to check out all our great sponsors. And as always, thank you for listening to the largest pound-for-pound pound podcast on the network. And we are out. FC didn't kill himself.